Dalšího zástupce průzerářů, kterým je Grant McKenzie. Hi Grant. But you can speak Czech, you understand Czech? Trochu, ano. Trochu, tak já budu mluvit trošku česky. Zkouška, <laughs> nemusíte. Zkouška, uh, ale uh, můžete na Granta normálně česky, takže on sice se tváří, jo, ale až potom se to rozjede, trošku tady upijeme toho Jamesona, tak úplně v pohodě se s ním domluvíte. A navíc uh, Grant uh, teda vede marketing uh, v Asahi, jak se to správně říká? Asahi. Asahi. Asahi Beer, Což je, těm patří Plzeň? Plzeňský prázdroj. Plzeňský prázdroj patří Japoncům, kdybyste nevěděli. Víte to? Kdo to neví, že Plzeňský prázdroj je teď japonský poklad? No, tak už to víte. Ale... Ale nejsem Japonec. Ne, ale já si myslím, já si myslím že to je dobře, že ta globalizace prostě Češi to neumí a Japonci Prostě to umí, ne? Okay. Ten management, nebo jo? No, myslím, není to tak, ale... Každopádně Grant má na starosti marketing, to znamená celosvětově, jak plzeňský Pilsner Urquil, jak je, nebo jak se to řekne? Kozel. Pilsner, Kozel, no. plzeňský, tak to je Grant, když, se, když byste jeli někde po světě, nelíbila se vám reklama, ha. zavolejte, hejtujte tady Granta, protože ten to schválil a díky němu to tam je. A když se vám ta reklama bude líbit a bude, to, a bude vám to všechno chutnat a fungovat, zase určitě Granta pochvalte, bude velmi rád, že dělá good job. Takže Grant, 10 minutes is yours. Jo, uh. Takže ne, myslím, že největší fuck up dneska by bylo, kdybych mluvil česky, takže kdo nerozumí anglicky? OK, to je komerční představka, jo? Commercial break. OK, so uh, this is my story and I am the corporate guy here. Can you, can you tell? <laughs> so great respect for all you people from startups. That's not me. So this is my story. I started working 20 years ago. Byl jsem rostemilý, ne? Už, <laughs> už ne, ale, tak, ale this is my story of 20 years. Because let me tell you, if you think there's fuck ups in startups, you have not worked in a big company. Woohoo! So this is what I tell my mother uh, that I do. She goes, what's this marketing? I said, it's great. Yeah, you meet great people, famous people, you win awards, internal, external. She goes, and they, and they pay you money for that? I said, yeah, they do, it's great. Um, but it's a little more complicated than that. And in my 20 years, I've tried to uh, summarize seven of the largest fuck ups that I personally made or was involved with. Um, and the ones which are not so painful that <laughs> I can't bring myself to talk about them in public. Um, so look, uh, the story is I, I have a nice career, so it's worked out okay, and it may surprise you as I continue to talk how I've survived, but I have. So let's start with number one, and this is at the beginning. So this is my first year at work, and I've called this one Lobsters and Laptops. So it started at the dinner, my first dinner in the company, And they invited the management trainees and they told us, you, you are the future leaders of our company. I said, oh, that sounds good. And they said, what would you like to eat? And they took us to a very nice restaurant. And I was a student and I've never been to a nice restaurant before. So of course, I just looked down and said, hmm, which is the most expensive thing on the list? Well, možná neříkal jsem, já jsem ze Skotska. So... I said, lobster, I would like the lobster. And the waiter whispered in my ear, do you know how to eat it? I said, fuck, who do you think I am? I'm the leader of the future. I know how to eat a fucking lobster. So he brought the lobster and the lobster looked like that. And I went, oh shit. And then he brought me these metal things. He said, bon appetit. <laughs> So basically the lobster ended all over me and all my colleagues thought this guy is the biggest dickhead that's here. Uh, and they were probably right. The second one, which was more serious, was my project. So my boss told me, this is an easy project. That's why we're giving it to you. I mean, it's important. That's why we're giving it to you. And they said, we just want you to create a selling story, like an interactive digital story. This was 1997, so digital was like, uh, for the salespeople, okay? I went, oh yeah. Don't worry about that, I've got the strategy. So I did this thing and I created, I've got to tell you, the most beautiful digital selling story. It, really beautiful. It was so beautiful that I had to buy a, a desktop computer and put it in the office because it was so high spec, it wouldn't work anywhere else. So when I showed it to my manager and I said, look, and she goes, one word, Grant McKenzie. I said, what's that? 
laptop. Fucking laptop. The sales guys have laptops and this doesn't work. I was like, oh shit. So I survived that one. And then they said, your problem is you're too British. So we're going to send you to a place called Porichi Natsazo. I said, what? Where's that? They said, it's near Prague. I said, where's that? They said, it's in the Czech Republic. I said, Where, where's that? They said, that's your problem. You're an idiot who doesn't know about the world. Okay. So they sent me out and they said, we've got a great idea. We're going to kill Haribo. I said, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Kill the bears. Fuck them. Right? And the idea is we've got beans. I don't know. Fazolki. I don't know how you say it in Czech. It's like, we've got these beans and they're made of jellies and they're going to kill Haribo. And I said, yeah, that's fuck them. Let's get them. So I really got into this. And in private, people told me, you know, Grant, uh, I'm not a marketing guy, but this doesn't sound like an easy or good idea. People, people like Haribo. I said, no, you don't understand. The red ones, they don't taste like strawberry. And the yellow ones, they don't fucking taste like lemon. I said, but, but maybe no one cares. No, they care. No one cared. It was a total fucking disaster. I spent three years of my life trying to convince everyone to do something that was stupid. So that was my first marketing lesson. Sometimes it's not a vision, it's a delusion. Um, second one, this was where I almost got fired. So I had a passion forever, truthfully, for Pilsner Urquell. This was in Romania. And I asked the global team, do you have some marketing stuff I can use for Pilsner Urquell? And they said, yes, here it is. And I said, wow, that's not very good. I can do better than that. And I told my team, look, let's do it different. They said, yeah, but we're not allowed to do different things. I said, don't worry, I will handle it. You know that management thing, I will handle it. And I did, so we created this copy, uh, which was Copied Never Equaled, the true original, very nice. And I knew that if anyone from global marketing saw it, I was in trouble, but no one came. Except the head of global marketing decided to visit Romania. No problem, I took him to the outlets, you know, that was Peroni, Grosch, our other brands, he was really happy. And then we got the taxi back to the hotel, I still remember it. And there was the semaphore, and the car stopped right there. Right fucking there. The whole of Bucharest, a two million people city, and they chose to stop there. And the next day, HR came, come here, and I was almost fired. And that was my first lesson, which is don't be an arrogant asshole. Some things, they're just not worth getting fired over. Uh, the worst thing I ever had to do in my career, luckily it's still the worst thing, was to close a brewery. So on the top left, you can see the former Cluj Brewery, the north part of Transylvania in Romania. And it was there for over 150 years. And it was the iconic brewery in our business. And senior managers in London said it's inefficient. It was. It's old fashioned. It was. And we should close it. <gasps> and I tried to convince them, not just me, that it was a bad idea. And the result was that. They ignored it. And they, they basically crashed the place. And I was very, very depressed. Honestly, very sad. A uh, hundred people lost their jobs, which was, Horrible, uh, we lost this iconic site. And it was one of those moments when you realize the best ideas come from outside. So I told my mom, I don't know, I'm thinking of resigning because like, I don't know, it just really matters to me. And she said, you know, I don't know about all that, but why don't they like make another one? I said, mom, they can't make another one. It's closed for economic reasons. She goes, what, not even a little one? <laughs> I said, that's the most ridiculous. That's a fucking great idea. So basically, I managed to convince them to give us a million euros to buy and build the first mini brewery. So if you go to Cluj today, there is the only mini brewery in our business. And uh, I guess the learning I had was even in the worst moments, you can find the greatest things. We were able to re-employ some of the employees and we opened a craft brewery on the site of the former brewery. Uh, <laughs> this is a huge marketing fuck up. <laughs> and some of you may be familiar with it. Hands up who knows Phoenix. Hands up who drunk Phoenix. Much less. Hangs up who loved it. Fucking no one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So the main lesson here is for God's sake, don't try and be trendy. There's just nothing worse. Just be authentic. So it, I take, it wasn't my fault it looked like that at the beginning. The last guy kind of launched it. But it was my fault that I said, ooh, I don't like that. Let's do that because crowdsourcing is a great idea. And the agency said, yeah, you've got to do it. Then we said, no, no, it's about craft. Okay, let's pretend we're craft. Jeez, what a nightmare. There was only one good thing came out of this, which was we came up with the idea of Volba Sladku, which is Kazdemiasitz Nove Pivo. Some of you who go to pubs may know it. And we cut the bullshit and got back to the beer. <laughs> so when people say authenticity, I don't know what that means sometimes, but in this case, it means no more bullshit. Uh, boom and bust. We had this great campaign called Patron. Anyone remember Patron? It was the relaunch of Gambrinus, you know, Nati Gromayasno. 
and we had an internal relaunch. Fantastic event. We told the sales guys, we're going to turn it around. The brand's going to be strong. The only problem was we held it the day before we were changing our IT systems. <laughs> yeah, some of you are going, fuck, I was there. So if you've ever been in a business that changes IT systems, it is horrible. Nothing works. We couldn't deliver to 26,000 customers the next day or for the next week. So all the sales guys got were phone calls about, where's me beer? Get it, Matt, the people. It's the debil of it. <laughs> so when I was going, yeah, can you care about my Patron, please? They're like, fuck off marketing. We've got shit to deal with. So even the greatest idea can be screwed up if you do it at the wrong time. And the last one, and this is the only uh, thing in my experience that you regret, because even with all your fuck-ups, you, unless you're an idiot, <laughs> and some people are, uh, you do learn from them. Uh, but the thing you care about and if you don't do it properly is looking after the people. So the cliche that good people only leave bad bosses, not bad businesses, is generally true, uh, both in big companies and small companies. And so for me, the moments I think I regret are the one or two people that I should have cared a bit more about. When you care for your people, the business goes easy. And then my last message is simply about that, which is um, if you want to leave a mark, you have to get burnt sometimes. <laughs> so if I'm an example of anything, I'm not too smart, but I do know how to learn. And I do know how to take risk. And people ask me, why is there no Czech marketing director of Prazdroy? I said, well, they're smart enough. I just wish they would take more risks. And so my advice is don't be afraid of risk. Uh, go for it. Realize you'll get burnt. Just, <laughs> just don't repeat it again. Okay, thank you. Well, um, kdo vůbec nerozuměl ničemu? Jo, tak to je přirozený odpad, to by šlo. <těk> Takže pojďme, pojďme rovnou na otázky. Bylo tam vlastně série fakapů, ale nebyl, nebylo to TPčko, myslím. Bylo to TPčko? Asi ne. Asi ne, bylo to takový fázovaný. Tak pojďme na dotazy. Uh, the biggest risk is not to quit, but actually to carry on and move the next generation forward. So I don't think I'm going to quit. Maybe I don't have enough balls, or maybe I feel I can actually do something more worthwhile in corporate life. And I think I have a great respect for you guys who do your own business. Um, I just don't have a good enough idea. <laughs> I can't think of anything unique to do, but I can think of a lot of great things to do in our business. So the Japanese have arrived. This is great news, because the Japanese have huge respect for tradition and pills not work well. And my job is to make sure they treat Czech beer properly and do it well. Nejdřív vezmeme tady, tady dotaz a pak tam vzadu. Did you bring samples? I said, tady mám zdorky. Ne, ale myslím, že u baru. I think at the bar, they definitely have a sample. Although it okay. is paid for. Are you paying? Uh, I, um, well, <laughs> there's a lot of people. I know. You know, but we do have prize joy nights where you can come and hear about more bullshit from me and you get free beer. So that's a small reclama. But I'll pay for one or two. What was the other question? The other question was yes, at the bank. Yes, they said, what's up? So we'll do this. Yo. No, I said, what's up? Are you married? No. Is your girlfriend here? No. I'm going to tell you. Hey, wait, cut the video. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Any other beer marketing career? Miluju Pilsner Urquell. A Radigast. So my second beer is Radigast. My third one is a Scottish one called Brewdog IPA. It's from my city. I don't know if you know. Ipa. And it's Key Pale Ale. It's very good. Tam ještě byl zadu dotaz. Do I think excellent will be next fuck up? Eh, maybe, but so far it sits in between fuck up and huge success. So it's it's in that middle ground. Thanks for embarrassing me. So I think it could be a huge success. So, what, Do you what? like pony? No. What was the question? Dead pony is excellent beer. Yes, yeah. I personally prefer 
prefer punk IPA, but excellent beer. Oh, <laughs> you can't please everyone. Okay. Small breweries, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, it's an old cliche, but it's true that the quality doesn't depend on the size. <laughs> Even though I'm quite tall, just saying. Um, I think uh, some of them are great. So, for example, Matushka uh, has got a great business. So, very good beer. Uh, different beer. So, Ipa's ales, mostly. Uh, and at high price, which means they are running a profitable business. Very good example. Other small breweries make Normal Nilejak, nothing special, for low price and they don't make any profit. That's not a good business or a good uh, contribution to the beer industry. Generally, craft beer has been great for beer. I'm very happy they came and they're developing because our leadership were too slow and too boring. And believe me, there were some of us trying to push them to do more, but it was hard. They're tired, old, white men. So we had to try and innovate. So most of them are good, but not all of them. Some small breweries, they really do make shit beer. Trust me. And just because you're a big brewer, it doesn't mean your beer's crap. No, it's not a crap. It's a craft lejac all over the world. And it's appreciated as that. And it is more. So how do I like being a Czech? How do I feel you? Yeah, how, do you, uh, how did you get used to Czech people? Oh, I love it. Czechs and Scottish, we're not so different. You know? I'm so sure people are honest. They said, I'm going to do it. We have a people, we have a whiskey, we have a nice, 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 nice